الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he dispatched a group of his companions to go on a war expedition. And on their return home, one of the Sahaba, he had a gash or a wound in his head. And so when it was time for Salat, he said that I'm not going to make wudu because I fear for my life, I'll just make tayammum. So some of the Sahaba said that you have to make wudu because water is available. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the verse, that if water is available, that if water is not available, then make tayammum from pure dirt. So he said that if I make wudu with water in this cold weather, I fear that I may, you know, get worse. They said, no, the water is available, you have to make wudu. So he made wudu and he died. When the Sahaba returned back to Medina and informed the Prophet of what happened, the Prophet وسلم, his face became red and he was angry and upset and he said, Allah kama May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala slaughter you like you slaughtered him. Alaysa shifa al su'al. Isn't the cure for ignorance a question? Couldn't you have just asked if you didn't know? But here it is, you cost somebody their life on a presumption, on a whim, on I thought, and you cost someone their life. The, the cure for ignorance is a question to just ask. And I'll give you a, a short story to show you how important it is to ask questions, because questions also lead us to make assumptions about people. And we assume things because we don't have the answers to our questions. So we want to judge the person, prejudge the person before the reality of the situation exposes itself. And as the saying goes, part of honoring truth is waiting for it to unfold and not painting people with your truth simply because you are impatient and you can't wait for the real them to expose themselves. Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi, he went to go visit one of his students by the name of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Imam Ahmed, which was one of his students, which shows you that these four Imams, most of them were students to one another. Imam Ahmed was a student to Imam Shafi, and Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and Abu Hanifa, they had a very close relationship as well. So it wasn't that these Imams, or excuse me, Imam Malik and Imam Shafi had a very close relationship as well. As a matter of fact, Imam Shafi memorized the whole muwatta of Imam Malik. Imam Shafi had a very strong memory and he memorized the whole book, the whole collection, hadith collection of muwatta of Imam Malik. Imam, ah Imam Shafi went to go visit Imam Ahmed on one occasion. And when Imam Ahmed's wife, and in some narrations his daughter, heard that Shafi was coming, she said to her father, or she said to her husband, that this is the Shafi'i that you're always talking about, this Imam, this great Imam with all of this knowledge, I, will, I would love to meet him. And he's spending the night at our house. So when they got there, she served Imam Ahmed, her husband, food as well as Imam Shafi. And mind you, she's watching everything that he does. And then when it was time for Isha, they prayed Salatul Isha together. Then it was time for Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud. And Imam Shafi didn't come up to pray. And then when Imam Ahmed went to go get him for Salatul Fajr, Imam Shafi didn't make wudu. He prayed Fajr without making wudu. So Imam Ahmed's wife, she said to him after Salatul Fajr, she said, this Imam Shafi that you pray so much, she said, She said, I notice or observe three things about him that is worthy of criticism. You praise him so much and you praise his knowledge so much, but I saw some things from him that he deserves to be criticized for. Imam Ahmed said, What? She said, Number one, 
that when we gave him food, when we put the food on the table, he ate so much, basically accusing him of being a gluttonous, that he ate so much of the food. This is not the Shafi'i that you told me about, who was humble, who ate very little, who was memorized of the Quran, and you know, this is not the man that you told me about. But when we put the food in front of him, he ate so much of it. He said, okay, what's the second one? She said, I noticed that he never got up to pray He didn't get up to pray to Hajj. How is he a scholar and he doesn't have a widowed? He doesn't have a portion of the night that he gets up and pray. He said, okay, what's the third? She said, I noticed that I saw him pray Salatul Fajr with us and he didn't even make wudu. He got up to pray Fajr and he didn't make wudu. Imam Ahmed said, I'm going to go ask him. Alayhi Shifa al a su'al. Isn't the cure for ignorance the question? Can't you just go ask as opposed to just assuming? So Imam Ahmed said, I'm going to go ask him. So Imam Ahmed went to Shafi and said to him, These are the three things that my wife noticed. Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala said, As for the first, yes, I did eat a lot of your food. But I didn't eat a lot of your food so that I could get full. He said, He said, but the food of a generous person, the food of a person who is honorable, the food of a person who is, is, is given to him by lawful means, by halal means, it is a dawa, it is a cure. You eat the food of people who earned it in a halal way, Eat the feet of people, food of people who are righteous, as the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to eat the food of the people who are righteous. It is a dawa, it is a it is a cure. He said, while the food of the stingy person, wa ta'am al fakhir, da'un. He said, while the food of the stingy person is a disease. He said, so I want it. For akel to kathiran min hatta atadawi. He says, so I ate a lot of your food so that I could be nourished and so that I could seek the, the shifa or the, the, the cure that was in the food of the righteous person who gave it to me. Imam Ahmed said, okay. He said, what's the next one? He said that you didn't stand up to pray Qiyam uh, al to Hajjud. Imam Shafi said that when I went downstairs after we prayed Isha, I began to look into some of a hadith he said, and I found a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya Aba Umair ma fa'ala nughayr. The hadith of Abu Umair, where he was the younger brother of Anas ibn Malik. He was actually the, uh, one of the young men from the Ansar, the young kids who had a bird. And he used to call him Umair, uh, uh, nughayr. And the bird died. And the Prophet Sallallahu noticed the young boy sitting down crying because the bird died and he made a rhyme. He said, Ya Aba Umair ma fa'ala nughayr. He said, Oh Abu Umair, what happened to your bird nughayr? Just that one hadith, Imam Shafi said, when I looked at this hadith, I began to extract over a hundred issues and a hundred benefits that we can gather from that one hadith. Ya Aba Umair ma fa'ala nughayr. He said, so as a result of that, I miss Qiyam layl but I consider seeking knowledge to be better than standing up at night for tahajjud. Imam Ahmed said, okay, the third. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, as for not praying Salatul Fajr without wudu, he said, when I begin to look at that hadith after Salatul Isha, ma namat aynayya, he said, my eyes never closed. I never went to sleep. So I prayed with you, fasalaytu, fasalaytu ma'akum salatul fajr bi wudu al isha. He says, so I pray salatul fajr with you from the same wudu that I had from salatul isha. That's why I didn't make wudu. There was no need for me to renew my wudu. I, my eyes never went to sleep. I stood up all night reviewing hadith. And Imam Ahmed went back to his wife and he said, what Imam Shafi'i did while awoke uh, was better than what we did while we were sleeping. And what he did the whole night of reviewing hadith and studying hadith was better than all of the prayers that we made during the night. The point that I'm making is that the shifa al a su'al is that the cure for ignorance is a question, just to ask. You see someone doing something, just ask. I noticed that you did X, Y, and Z. Could you explain to me why you did such and such? 
instead of assuming or making or, or judging people with presumptions that are totally false and that are totally inaccurate or as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and to see bu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin that you harm people in ignorance and then afterwards you are regretful hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu